Hey, good morning. It is Sunday, the 6th of June. I'm in Beverly Shores. I'm on my yoga mat. I just got finished doing a yoga practice. Prior to that, I read another chapter in the book. Uh, what is this book called? Uh, I'm going to get the book real quick. I don't know why I can't remember things. It is forgiving what you can't forget. Um, prior to reading that, I uh, did my little Bible study and prayer. I got up early this morning and climbed up that hill back there so that I could see the sunrise, but I think it was too cloudy and the sun was not really shining through. So I just decided to get my uh, day started with prayer, Bible study, reading this book and doing yoga. And after I finish this journal entry, I think I am going to watch a church service on YouTube. Since it's Sunday, you know, gotta get my praise and worship on for sure. Um, I actually did when I got up this morning and uh, I went over there into the woods, communing with nature, with the deer and the squirrels and the bumblebees and the ants and the bugs and whatever else is there in nature. <laughs> I did do um, another journal entry, so I may actually post two today and just consider the one I did earlier um, for yesterday. Since it was so early in the morning, it was the very first thing that I did, and it really focused on yesterday. This one is focusing on today. Um, part of the reason that I wanted to do to take time to do another one is because I'm really enjoying this book. Um, what I think I just finished. What chapter did I just finish? Hold on, just one second. Let's see what these chapters are called. So yesterday, I read the chapter, Connecting the Dots, and today I read chapter seven, Correcting the Dots. And it's really talking about, both of them, we're kind of talking about understanding, you know, the things that have happened in your life that have, have caused you pain. And, um, you know, since we're all a product of our experiences, the way when something bad happens, um, however it is that we feel and whatever our perceptions are of that situation, um, it actually influences how we walk through life day, day by day, you know, what we believe, what we see. Um, and so kind of perceptions become reality. And um, it kind of gave examples of, um, uh, Actually, let me see if I can find the page. Um, one second. Oh, here we go. Bear with me, okay? So, the experiences I have affect the perceptions I form. The perceptions I form eventually become beliefs I carry. The beliefs I carry determine what I see. And so, um, you know, the woman writing this book, she obviously, she writes these things from her perspective. And, you know, she gave um, an example of, um, you know, if you're in your house and, a, you know, a dust bunny rolls across the floor and you've never seen one before, you may just look at it and be like, oh, it's a dust, bu dust bunny. Let me, you know, get a broom and, and sweep it up. And it's no big deal. You see it for what it, what it is. But if you had a different experience where in that same place, you had seen a mouse scurry across the floor and, you know, your reaction to the mouse was to be scared of it and to immediately be like, ah, 
not screaming, you know, jumping up on a chair, calling for whoever it is that that, that you want to rescue you from um, the mouse, you know, to get the mouse out of the house. That um, if that had been your experience and that was frightening for you, that when you saw the dust bunny out of the corner of your eye, you may believe it to be a mouse and be terrified again. So that's kind of an example of how your perceptions will, how your experiences inform your, your perceptions and those perceptions um, influence your beliefs and um, impacts how you, how you see the world, right? Um, and so what I like about this is, is she gives her examples of things and then, you know, she encourages the reader to think about your own experiences and, and, and painful situations that you've had and w what is the reality and what did it do for you? And so as I thought about it, um, I could think of my own examples and, you know, specifically, you know, when you think about, um, these, these beliefs will influence how you, what you see. And for me, you know, part of the reason that I want to do, um, I consider myself in this tran transformation journey, right? And it is transform, transformation of the mind, transformation of what I believe and what I see in myself and really positioning myself to love myself and accept myself and not, you know, to um, have any shame about who I am or how I am and those types of things. Um, and so it was interesting today because I, um, I was walking outside and um you know in order to get through outside I've got to go through these glass doors and you know these glass doors are almost like mirrors and I um I looked at myself I looked at my reflection and I thought wow I look kind of tiny you know not like super skinny or, or whatever but I was like oh I look I look really good but yesterday when I was looking in the mirror I just felt, I felt fat, you know, so I sometimes just see myself as a, as a fat person. And, um, so I'm trying to overcome that. And, and I, I tend to take a lot of pictures and, you know, do videos and things like that so that I can actually see because, you know, a picture, um, shows you the real deal. Right. And I just know that throughout my life, you know, there were things that happened that made me believe that I had a problem with weight or that other people thought that I was fat and I internalized that. And, you know, and I ended up with weight problems, you know, which I, um, for the most part have overcome, <laughs> overcome. Um, but I, I have a tendency to self-sabotage sometimes, but anyway, um, you know, I can think back and I, I've told this story before, so I don't know if I've, I've told this story in these, um, in these journals. And so if you happen to be one of the few people that are watching, uh, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I can remember, you know, when I was in seventh grade and I went to the doctor for an annual physical, you know, at the end of seventh grade and I got on the scale and I weighed 105 pounds. Now, the reality is that I've always had kind of um, a muscular physique. You know, I got, you know, my legs are, are, are big, you know, my calves are big, my thighs are big, you know, but very, very muscular. And um, I tend to weigh like 20 to 25 pounds more than people think I am. You know, like somebody can stand right next to me and look the same as me physically. And, you know, nine out of 10 times, I'll weigh about 20 pounds, 20 to 25 pounds more than they will. 
And so the reality was I went to the doctor, I weighed 105 pounds. My mother thought in her head that I probably weighed like 80 pounds. So when I got on the scale and I weighed 105 pounds, she was like, oh my God, you know, she was shocked by that. So she didn't think that I was fat or anything, but she just made a comment that like, what is her, her comment was something like, wow, I only weighed 99 pounds when I got married. And I took her comparison of her weight when she got married and my weight, you know, at seventh grade as um, an indicator that she saw that as a negative for me. You know, then in eighth grade, you know, in eighth grade, I weighed 135 pounds and, you know, she didn't say anything, but I thought, wow, at 105 pounds, my mother thought I was heavy, right? And so at 135 pounds, I must really be heavy. And then, you know, at the end of ninth grade, I weighed 165 pounds. <laughs> and so... I really thought that I was just this fat girl. And, um, you know, so that's really where this um, belief or, or this body shaming that I had of myself started then. And I carried that body shame forever, <laughs> you know, just for a really long time. Because even when I you know, lost weight and really kind of came into my own. Cause you know, if you're an adult, we all go through puberty, right? There's all this, there's this awkward years that we, we go through where, um, you know, we, we go from this little kid to, you know, growing into, you know, maturing, right. And you go tall, you grow taller, you you gain weight, you, you know, the shape of your body changes, you know, you're a woman, you get boobs, your butt changes, um, you know, you got more hormones raging, uh, you get acne, you get, you know, there's all kind of stuff. And, um, you know, but it's a totally natural process. And then you get through it and you get to the other side. And, you know, it's almost like, you know, puberty is, you know, you were a caterpillar and you're, you know, puberty, these, these years of puberty are when you're in your cocoon and then you come out, you, you blossom as this, this beautiful butterfly. And so I think that we all go through that. Um, and, but when I got to my butterfly stage, I, I still had a hard time accepting myself and not feeling as though, you know, I mean, I was just plagued by insecurities and everything. And it, and it just was all based on what I thought somebody else thought of me and the weight that I gave it. Um, so this book talks about carrying shame and how you've got to let go of it. And you have to get to the point where you love you and you accept you and you can be like, uh, I, I think they referenced Adam and Eve when Adam and Eve were in the garden of Eden and they were both naked and, and had no shame. Um, you know, God made them in his own image and God is perfect. So they were perfect just the way that they, they were and they were comfortable in their own skin and in their nakedness. And I just thought that that was very powerful. And so that's like a point where I really need to try to get to, you know, I can't say that I'm a hundred percent there, but I am going to be intentional about appreciating myself more. I'm going to be intentional about recognizing when I'm, I'm feeling shame, like body shame. <laughs> Cause I do all the time, you know, I, um, 
uh, I don't want to say that I'm envious, but let me just go ahead and say I, 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 I have some body envy because there are people who have, you know, perfectly toned and tight skin. I, you know, I feel like my body looks good in clothes, <laughs> but you know, the back of my thighs are, you know, my, my thighs are kind of jiggly and, um, you know, I got cellulite and stuff like that. And, you know, I got scars and stretch marks and stuff like that. And so I don't, I look at them and I'm like, oh, I don't like them, but it's really a part of life, right? Lots of people do. And I can remember, um, a friend of mine told me it's like you know and it's from a man's perspective he's like you can't worry about that kind of stuff we don't care about that <laughs> and so um yeah so I I just I recognize that on certain things that I need to get out of my my own head on that and I just need to I need to accept myself I need to accept my whole self you know who I am, how I am, what I look like, you know, you know, if I got jiggle in my arms or got jiggle in my legs, um, I should just be okay with that. You know, I find myself because I'm, I'm getting older. I'm just like seeing, you know, imperfections in my face and I don't have to be perfect. And I just need to be loving myself, imperfections and all, you know, so that's what I'm going for. I'm not there. I know that I need to. And I, I appreciate this book because it's, it's helping me, um, or it's reminding me of the things that are important, right? Um, you know, it's all about forgiveness. And so, um, You know, there there are certain things I'm also thinking about, you know, how am I on, how am I doing on forgiveness? And I think for the most part, when it comes to other people, that um, I am pretty forgiving. You know, there are some situations where people have done things that hurt my feelings and that were just, I wouldn't have imagined that they would have done that, just kind of threw me for a loop, caught me off guard, and depending upon who that person is and how important they were in my life, um, forgiveness might be a little more difficult. Um, I have found that if I don't, acknowledge the feeling that whatever how I, how I felt about whatever it is that happened um, and I didn't process that clearly you know specifically um, that forgiveness wasn't really possible because you have to feel you have to understand the impact of what's happening you have to understand what you think about it um, and how that may potentially influence your thoughts moving forward um, so that you can make a conscious decision to forgive and so I um, I found that very thought-provoking as well and I, I enjoyed it anyway let me do my MEPS check-in. Um, mentally, I feel clear. I feel, um, yeah, nothing, nothing bogged. I'm not bogged down by anything. And so I'm in a good place from a mental perspective. Emotionally, I feel good. I'm, I'm happy. Um, it's a good day thus far. Uh, physically, I feel good, which is, um, it's an upgrade from how I was feeling when I did my first journal entry at like five o'clock in the morning. 
when I was tired and I had walked up the hill and I did not, um, I used the wrong type of, um, like in here you need like deep woods off because there's all kinds of creepy crawly stuff, fly, you know, crawling, flying around back there. And um, I had put on some lotion that um, was supposed to ward off mosquitoes. And so I used that instead of the off. And then I went up there and I'm like, I think something bit me in my head. I think something bit me in my feet <laughs> and on my arm. And I was like, oh, I'm itching, itching, itching. So yeah, I was itching. Um, since then, you know, I did come back in the house and I, and I grabbed some off and I have come outside and, um, there's nothing, nothing bothering me at all. So, um, my body feels good and I, I did a good yoga workout. Um, so I feel good about that. And after I, um, I'm sorry, let me stay on track. Physically, I feel good. Spiritually, I feel blessed, thankful. I love being here. Um, I love having this time um, for myself to, to connect, to, to, to pray, to be grateful, to appreciate that all that... Um, God has created, exposed me to, I mean, just being out here in nature is so, so wonderful. It just makes me feel one with God. So this is great. I love it. Um, yeah, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to, um, be in my right mind. Um, I'm just grateful for all the things that can so easily be taken for granted, right? Like, I can see, and I can speak, and I can communicate, and I can walk, and I can run, and I can bike, and I can, I can do all types of things. Um, and I have people in my life that I love and that love me. And, um, yeah, life is just good, you know, so grateful, so grateful and so appreciative. Um, I'm so thankful for, for peace as well, peace and joy and hope and faith and all those things. And yeah, so that's me this morning. Um, I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to go and, uh, watch a church service. And then I think I may take myself on a walk or a hike or a bike ride or something. Um, yeah. So that's it. Take care. <laughs>